Hi, now, sir, just how satisfying was this afternoon's performance considering the strength of that White Sox lineup? Yeah, I mean, uh, very respectable lineup. Uh, you know, went in there and, and, and got the job done and gave some length again and then came out with the W. You've been a, been a guy that's shown a lot of different looks throughout the course of the season, whether you're dropping down or you're changing your arm angle. Just how difficult is that to learn uh, for you and to do seamlessly on the mound throughout the course of an outing? Yeah, I mean, I've been doing it for a couple of years already. Uh, I want to say five or six years. And, you know, it's based off of feel. Um, and it's worked for, uh, for me so far. So hopefully I can continue to do that. We'll take the next question from Bob Clappish. Hi, Nestor. We're just asking the Luke Voigt about what it's like to face a pitcher like yourself. Uh, and he says it's just it's just different because everybody else throws so much harder. Uh, you have a very unique approach to the craft. So my question to you is, if you could wave a magic wand and tomorrow start throwing 98, 99, would, and pitch like everyone else, would you do that? Or would you do continue to do what you do from different angles and different sequences and just do your thing? Uh... You know, I, I would love to throw a 97, 98, wave a wand around and throw 97, 98, obviously. Um, but as long as I can get the job done and, and, and keep getting outs, which is the most important thing, uh, you know, I, I stick to what I got. And, you're, and the way you at, at times drop down to three quarters, is that something that you decide to do at the very last second as you're going into your windup, or is, or is there some planning in, in that? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, through the game plan, me and Hagee or whoever's catching man to play, uh, obviously, you know, uh, you know, we, we like to go about things uh, accordingly, and 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 I think it, you know when the when the uh, when the time comes and and, and the opportunity arises, uh, we try and do that. Usually on two strikes. Uh, usually on two strikes, but I, I like to mix it in every now and then, so so nobody knows that you know we can we can do it at, at, at any count. Any time, right? Okay, thank you, Brian Hoke. You have the next question. Hey, Nestor. Uh, in general, what's the uh, the clubhouse vibe after this series, taking two out of three from the White Sox and nothing really came easy for you guys? Yeah, big series. I mean, uh, you know, coming into this road stand, we, 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 <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, we knew where we were and uh, and what we needed to do. Uh, and I think we took uh, good care of that. And, uh, you know, clubhouse vibe is good right now. Uh, got the serious win and, and hopefully uh, continue that. Did this feel like the kind of series that could be a postseason matchup for you guys? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, White Sox are a very good team. They're first place right now in their division. Uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's probably somebody that we could potentially face, you know, down the line. Thank you. Joel Sherman, you have the next question. Nestor, a lot of this uh, success over the last month or so has been fueled by guys like you, who you played with in Scranton or seem to lose jobs over the last few weeks. I wonder what you think that says uh, about your group. Yeah, I mean, we've done a really good job <clears throat> of guys coming up and 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 holding the fort. Uh, you know, some guys have, have have gone down with the COVID IL and some injuries, unfortunately. But uh, the guys coming in, like you said, uh, from Scranton, you know, they're they're hungry and 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 they want to keep this 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 team afloat, and uh, we're battling right now.